I was waiting. I was waiting for her to continue. <laughs> I was enjoying that. I was. I was. I was well, just go right ahead, and uh, we'll have a we'll have a, an organ solo all day. Have. <laughs> Greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I hope you had a wonderful morning, splish splashing in here, and uh, praise be to God that we are here. Amen? And um, a few little announcements real quickly. Administrative, maybe I, I better hand this off to somebody else. Administrative council tomorrow night at 7 o'clock. And don't forget about Bible study on Wednesday. And tomorrow is a card ministry. Uh, no, the six is a card ministry. Woo, the six is a card ministry. I get that right. Any other announcements? Well, y'all ready to sing then, aren't you? All right. Well, good morning. If you will, take your United Methodist hymnal and turn to him. 569, we have a story to tell the nations. Hymn 569, we'll sing all stanzas of hymn 569, we have a story to tell the nations. As we share praises and concerns this morning, 
I wonder who has a praise to lift up this morning. Uh, do we need to send meals in? <laughs> All right. All right. Uh, well, and do continue to lift Doug and, 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 uh, and his caregiver, Miss Ginger, uh, very much in prayer. But praise God he's home. Others. Concerns. Continue to keep Marvin and, and Patsy in your prayers. Uh, continue to keep Helen in your prayers very much and the family. Um, and um, of course, Miss Betty. We're going to keep Miss Betty Rasnick in her prayer still. Um, and, uh, uh, and each and every one that was listed. Any others? Yes. Yeah. She was, she was. The boys need prayer. <laughs> no, she needs, she does with those three. Yeah. Yes. Others. So, yes, it is good to see her back. And in her hiatus, but she, she's taken off again on us, so. But short term. Others. All right. Let's sing. You may remain seated, and if you will turn in the faith we sing to 2214, Lead Me, Guide Me. This is just a chorus. We'll sing through this chorus twice. 2214, Lead Me, Guide Me. What a powerful prayer, Lord. And I know it's a course, but what, a, what an awesome prayer to lead me, guide me along the way. How you have led your people so many times in so many ways. How you led Abraham when you called him out and told him to leave where he was, his descendants, his family, and go to the land that you would show him. We're still looking for that, that land that you will show us. It's a promise. But in the meantime, lead us the way that you led 
the children of Israel out of Egypt. Whether it's a cloud that covers us or a fire that leads or comes between us and the world. Lord, lead us. Lead as you led the, the Magi. Lead us. And may we be willing to be led. Teach us to serve you as, Lord, you'd really deserve to be served. To give and not count the cost as our Savior gave without counting the cost to fight and not heed the wounds to toil and not seek for rest to labor and not ask for any reward except this Lord of knowing that we do your will through your Son, Jesus Christ. Guide us. Lord, we are vessels, fragile vessels, vessels that desire to be full, vessels that wants to celebrate, vessels that needs to be uplifted, vessels that need to be comforted, Vessels that need peace, vessels that need your hand of grace, vessels that need to be filled to overflowing. Fill us today. Pour out your Spirit upon us and upon all gathered here. And Lord, in your mercy, by your love and grace, we ask for healing upon Marvin and to be with Patsy and to be with Doug and, and with Miss Ginger and upon Helen and her family and upon Miss Betty Rasnick and upon Miss Becky Belcher and, and Lord, uh, and, and James, and just be with Becky. I, I praise you that she's doing well, but uh, Lord, healing for Lou and Sarah Bellenberger. And Lord, for Mary and John. Lord, we lift Mary and John Topinski up very much in prayer and ask for your intervention for Jack Van Dyke and for David Stanton for Dean and Nancy, for the, all those on their hearts, for the lost souls in our community and all around, for a world that seems to be calloused on everything, especially to you, Jesus. I pray your healing grace and your love to reach out and that convicting spirit that tells of the love of Jesus, a love that surpasses all understanding, a love that goes to the very depths of the soul and brings the soul into victory. Lord, I pray for our communities. I pray for our churches. I pray for those in the hospital. I pray for those who are in prison. I pray for those who are in the nursing home. Lord, I pray for our first responders. I pray for our soldiers. I pray for all of our veterans. I pray, Father, for those who, well, our church, United Methodist Church, all of the churches. I pray for this church. I pray for all the churches around. I pray, Lord, you'd lead us and guide us. And more importantly, I pray that we'll be a soul-winning station, a place where souls can find rest, peace, healing, and salvation. Lord, we ask this in the loving name of Jesus who taught us to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen and amen. They do well, don't they? This morning I want to look at a passage of Scripture out of Matthew chapter 2. And matter of fact, if, if the Lord continues to lead that way, we're going to, for the next two weeks, uh, or this week and next week, we're going to still be in this same chapter, these same verses. So when you get your bulletin next week, you say, well, 
this is the same bulletin we had last week. No. Um, different time, different setting, different sermon, hopefully. If the, if the pastor doesn't get confused between then and say, uh, I've never preached this one before, have I? <laughs> but I want you to think about something this morning. Now, I know this is a, a, a passage about the Magi um, and about them coming to Jerusalem. But, but I want you to think about something this morning, about excitement. I want you to think about, and, and what does the, the title of the, the sermon say? Do what? Absolutely. It is exciting. But with Jesus, everything is exciting. Amen? So, let us bow our heads in a word of prayer. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Father God, we don't ask this lightly. Because we need the Holy Spirit to give understanding, clarity to the uttermost, to know how to reason and to interpret and rightly divide the word of truth. And Lord, how can we humans even know how to understand your word without the leadership of the Holy Spirit? Come, Holy Spirit, come. We ask this in the name of Christ, our Savior. Amen and amen. As you are able, would you stand for the reading of God's Word, beginning with verse 1 of chapter 2 of the book of Matthew. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child? who has been born king of the Jews. For we have observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When, the king, when King Herod heard this, he was frightened and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes and the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. And they told him in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet, and you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, by, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently. For the child, and when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen <clears throat> at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chest, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. The Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Now I want you to take, I want you to take note of something in verse 10. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. There was so much excitement. And I'm not even sure that's a, a good way to say it, but, but there was so much excitement in the command. I want to show you something. And excitement just spread across that child's face as they got my hand and led me to see that something new. So it doesn't matter what it is. 
to a child something new, something that brings excitement, something that brings joy. Let's talk about Marilyn's, the, the three knothead boys and, uh, and, 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 and their daughter. Well, you should have seen how excited they were when they got a puppy for Christmas. They had to show. Children have a way of just becoming so excited about what they have, and especially if it's something new, and they want to show you right there and, and there immediately. Bishop Bob Farr writes in his book, Renovate or Die, uh, and he tells a story early on in the book. He tells a story about some friends who couldn't wait to show them how they had redecorated their house. Now, they had told him, we have renovated our house. And this is for another sermon a different time and another time. But let me just say, give you a preview to this. Folks, we, most churches don't know how to renovate. It's kind of like Jay's moving the trough. Amen. It's, you know, we know, we know how to re redecorate. We de redecorate real well. But they had told him, come see, we've renovated the house. And when he got there, he said they, uh, they had redecorated and said it was lovely. But they were so excited, they, wanted, they took him from room to room to room, showing him what they had done. And he said, it was beautiful. Don't we get excited to show people things? Amen? We get something new. When something exciting happens, we want to let them know. We have to tell them because it is so exciting. It's something new. There's excitement in being led to something new. Say it again. There's excitement in being led to something new. And you've already formed in your mind what this sermon is about, and guess what? It's not. Amen. <laughs> when you think about something. Luke chapter 2 introduces us to a man who the, the Word of God says that he was a righteous man, he was a devout man, a man by the name of Simeon, who waited and waited and waited for the constellation of Israel until finally the Holy Spirit led him to the Christ child. And he was excited. He was excited to see the Christ. If you read the other passages about the birth of Christ and the, and the shepherds, they too went away rejoicing at what they had both seen and heard. The Magi that we read about today in Matthew 2 were excited. They were excited as the star led them through the many, many, many months. Oftentimes we think, boy, they just got up and the next day they were there. Not so. They traveled miles and miles and months and months. Speculation, they may have traveled for a year to two years. It's a long ways for them to get there. Now, Let's suppose they did travel for a year, two years, maybe even three years. You know how things kind of wane as you, as you go along and excitement kinds of dwindles? You need a little boost every now and then to get the excitement going again. Well, when the star led them, I, I've always wondered about this. I'm, now, this is, just a, this is just Gordon, okay? But I've always wondered why. If the star was leading them, God hadn't given me an answer about this yet. But I've wondered and wondered, and I've, I've dug through and dug in, and I haven't come up with an answer yet. But I've wondered, if the star was leading them, why did they have to stop and tell Herod? Amen. And you know what one, uh, a dear, dear professor of mine at Duke would say? Gordon, that's immaterial. Stick with the facts. And I said, but inquiring minds want to know. 
But think about this. They, had, they were excited. They got there. And once they got to Bethlehem and the star stopped, they were filled with joy. So to say the least, they were excited. They were excited at what they were about to see. If you think about the word epiphany, and I know epiphany Sunday was, you know, almost a month ago. It's amazing how time just goes by, but, but think about this. When you think of epiphany, it is the manifestation of Christ. It was exciting to the Magi. They were seeing something new. It was exciting for Simeon, that manifestation of Christ. It was exciting for him. It was exciting for Anna. It was exciting for the shepherds, this manifestation of Christ to all who came and witnessed his birth was, it was exciting. And they went away and all of them praising God and they had reason to praise God. All went away witnessing Christ. This is the Son of God. Witnessing Christ is always a time of rejoicing and praising God. Amen. We don't often think about our witness as being a time of of praising God. Amen. But it is. I mean, you don't want to tell a story that, that is a downer, do you? Now, when you go and tell a story to somebody, if you have something new has happened, something exciting has happened to you, maybe you found a new restaurant. And it's delicious. Kind of like a dear friend of mine, actually who was uh, mine and Peggy's uh, uh, pastor a year before we went into the ministry and he became a dear, dear friend. But George used to say, if you want to know the best places to eat, follow the fat man. I tell you, I, I, and, and I resemble that. I say, if you want to know the best place to eat, uh, and I'm not going to finish that. But anyway, you know, you get excited about something, amen? And you want to tell everybody. When there's exciting news, you want to tell them. When suddenly something has happened to you, you want to know, you want to tell people. People, my sisters and brothers, this world needs exciting news. Amen? amen? This world needs exciting news. Because I still believe that God wants to pour out His Spirit upon all of humanity. And I believe God's going to do it. Before all this little ball of yarn is wrapped up, I believe God's going to do just as God said He would in Scripture. Amen? But you look around, so much of the world is focused on the struggles of life. We know about it. We we lamented ourselves, amen? Go buy a dozen of eggs, and you'll do a lot of lamenting. I like one little post I seen here a while back, and a guy had a carton of 18 eggs and said, don't quibble, I know what I have here. So, you know, I know what I've got. So, do you know what you've got? Amen? Do you know what's in here? Is it exciting for you? I'm just going to sit down just for a minute on that. Let that sink in just for a minute. Okay. Because y'all, I want y'all to just think about this just for a minute. Whether Jesus is exciting to you or not. Don't believe it. Is Jesus exciting to you? Well, you're doing a little better. Is Jesus exciting to you? All right, now there you go. Now I'm down and I can't get up. Now, I want want you to think about something this morning. And this is why, and I say that because of this reason. So much of the world today can tear you down, can drag you down. So much of the, uh, the, the news within the world and everything, even in in 
you know, with Christianity and, and even Christian news. Sometimes it's nothing but a downer. And I know with all that we're experiencing and with all that, that's going on with, between all of the denominations and everything, you know, it, it can it just get you down. Folks, I don't know about you, but I think we need a manifestation of Jesus. Amen? I think we need to go to the place and may God lead us by the Holy Spirit to the place where we can find Jesus. Amen? May we seek the places where we can find Jesus. Folks, because I'm going to tell you what, we need Jesus in our lives as the, the Magi did. They were led by that star. Whatever it takes, wherever it is, God's lead us to the place that we need to be that we can experience the manifestation of Jesus Christ. Amen? Because in this new year, you know, we're not that far away from the Lenten season. Amen? We are, if memory serves me right, we are about 21, 22, 23 days. So we're less than a month We're about 23, 24 days away from Ash Wednesday. And um, we have a, we have, Lord's will, and we've got a a great Ash Wednesday service planned. Amen. And, And I say that because, listen, folks, we need Jesus. Amen. In all that we do, we need Jesus. Simeon realized that. The Magi realized that. And they came seeking. I pray that we seek Christ in all we do. I pray that there is something exciting happen that we can experience and see Jesus Christ in new ways, in revealing ways, in revelation ways. I pray that not only do we see that, but we rejoice and we praise God. I know that sometimes it's difficult to do, but I pray that we go away rejoicing and spreading the good news of Jesus Christ just as those who came to the manger, those who came to the house and seen Jesus did. I know that in this world, and let me just say, I know that sometimes we all struggle. Maybe you're struggling this morning. Maybe you, you're in need of healing. Maybe there's, you're seeking something from Jesus. But I, I want to encourage you to do this, to know that there is something exciting about Finding Jesus. And I pray that in this year, and as we move towards the Lenten season and beyond, that we find new and exciting manifestations in Jesus Christ. Ways that will lead this church. Ways that will Bring souls in, not just for new members, but for salvation. You know, I think about a lot of things that we get excited about. Birthdays, births, community events that benefits the, the, you know, the community. I get excited about salvation, about the saving of the soul and baptisms and all this. Amen about a soul that's come to know Jesus, a soul that was lost, a soul that was addicted, a soul that feels that they are unworthy, of, a soul that feels like they're nothing, and yet they find Jesus and find all the happiness and the peace, and they find what they need. That's a manifestation. I pray that we may find the manifestation, the great manifestations of Christ, that we go, we seek, 
we see, we rejoice, we praise God, and we tell others. So this morning, as we stand to sing our hymn of invitation, folks, the Magi came to see Jesus, to see this great manifestation, this epiphany. I love epiphanies. Amen. You ever have an epiphany? I hope we have a whole bunch this year. Amen. I hope Jesus acts in ways like, mm, like you've never seen him act before. I pray God just pour out his spirit and open up the windows of heaven and grace just falls everywhere. Amen. I pray that manifestation of Jesus, that, that there will be many, many, many epiphanies happen within this church. But may we, may we go. Folks, it takes a little work sometimes. But it takes, here's what it takes. Follow the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit will lead you to where you need to be to see this epiphany. It's exciting. Pray about that as we stand and sing and let the Holy Spirit lead you. Amen. If you will, turn to United Methodist Hymnal to hymn number 383. This is a day of new beginnings. We'll sing verses 1, 2, 3, and 4. Hymn 383. This is a day of new beginnings. This is a day of new beginnings. Every day with you is new beginnings. Every day is fresh. Every day has its possibilities. And every day is a possibility of an epiphany. Where are you leading us, Lord? Where do you need to lead us? Where will you lead us? Where will we allow you to lead us? Oh, it's exciting. And we want to see those places, Lord. We want to encounter those times with you. We want to be engulfed with your spirit. Praise you. To glorify your holy name. To lift up the holy name of Jesus. To tell others that they too may experience this precious Jesus. Lord, help us to strive and look for an exciting day tomorrow.
Amidst all the what the world may give and all that's going on, may we look for tomorrow and an exciting day in you. Bless my sisters and brothers. Lord, I ask your blessings upon their service, upon their attendance, upon their time, their prayers, their offering, their tithes. I pray your blessings upon them as they go forth now to share Jesus with the world, to go share the good news and the possibilities of, oh, what Jesus may do in each of our lives tomorrow and the next day and the next. Send us forth now in your love and in your grace in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen and amen. God bless you.